So as a way of kind of verifying inside tracker approach and the algorithm, you published a paper, I mean, it was uh, in 2018, Longitudinal Analysis of Biomarker Data from Personalized Nutrition Platform in Healthy Subjects. So what led you to publish that paper and what kind of outcomes did you see? Yeah, so, so uh, first I'm a scientist, as I said before. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a scientist, uh, I believe that uh, uh, not only our customers should enjoy uh, the value of Insta Tracker, I want to allow the uh, scientific community and all the population in the world to enjoy that as well. So we are, uh, our mantra is to publish papers. Actually, we're working now on uh, another paper that we will submit very soon. The reason for that is, Again, first to show to the world that uh, personalized nutrition can really work. And the, and the second one is to give the value of the whole population and to allow them to understand that uh, what we are doing is uh, actually uh, uh, makes sense and important. So, and I think that the only way to do it is in uh, publishing in a peer-reviewed scientific pub uh, paper. Yeah, absolutely. I think we have the food wars because we try and do you know, these RCTs, individual, you change one parameter and humans are too complex, our environment is too complex. And so you can change the parameters and look at the markers that you care about and show whatever you like. It's like keto is good or vegan is good, yeah. you know. And so this kind of big data analysis of real life is by far the best way of trying to see what is actually yeah. going to make life better for people. And yeah, so, yeah, and 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 ju just maybe to explain to your audience about the uh, what we published in 2018. Mm -hmm. So we looked at a, a cohort of around 1,000 subjects that use Insta Tracker, and again, it 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 was uh, paying customers. We haven't uh, control when they will test, and we haven't control what intervention they will select. Um, but what we done in this uh, study, we selected subpopulation that tested uh, at least twice. So they had the baseline and the follow-up and the average time between baseline to follow-up was seven months. Then we uh, monitor what intervention they selected. And what we found that uh, this 1000 subjects selected 525 different intervention. So uh, if you looked at that, uh, on average, each intervention was selected by two people. So it was really personalized. It's not like all everyone selected the uh, old Okay, and, and then we uh, uh, looked at a subpopulation that uh, started with a, a biomarker that is out of normal. So for example, started with high LDL or high uh, um, glucose or low vitamin D and combined them again together and, uh, and monitor what was the level at the baseline and the level at the follow-up. And what we have seen, we've seen a correlation. Again, it's not a causation because it's a, it, it's basically observational study, but we've seen a, a, a nice correlation between uh, using the insta tracker intervention and the improvement of the blood biomarkers from baseline to follow up. So that's the high level of what we have seen in this paper. The paper was really about the effectiveness of the mechanism in terms of yeah. improving. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So was there anything surprising? Did you see? Did you see anything surprising? I, I saw one thing that I kind of looked at the paper. I saw like having eating dairy um, reduced LDL. Did, did I see that correctly? Yeah. So we have seen some. Uh, uh, what, what we try to do also is to do to use some system biology, computational biology, and understand. Okay, what uh, as you said something that is a a, a bit a, a weird. And a, again, indeed, uh, dairy was one of them. And, but uh, uh, when we looked at the literature, we have seen that uh, there are some papers that show that uh, uh, consuming dairy is actually helping you to decrease LDL. So it's, uh, it was, uh, 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 let's say, unexpected, but uh, actually there, there have been some uh, publication in the peer-reviewed uh, scientific publication that show that uh, dairy can help you to decrease LDL. But we, we have seen a lot of other uh, uh, interesting information. And uh, because we have now a, a, a big database, and we have a, a very good data science team, we can start mining the literature, no, sorry, mining our database and starting to develop science, not only use a uh, published science. So we can start giving you recommendations based on data from our uh, uh, cohort. And I can give you an example, the paper that we are uh, submitting right now, we looked at a, a subpopulation of farmers 
from a, a, someone that is an ultra marathon runner, so that running like 100 miles or something like that, uh, to marathoners, to half a marathoners, to 5Ks, to someone that I know, joggers, and to what I call couch potatoes, okay, completely sedentary. And then we looked at a, a, we looked at them, and we have a lot of them. As I said, it's seventeen thousand, something like that. It's a very big population, and try to see what is the correlation between running and the level of biomarkers. And it's in a lot of the metabolic related markers, we have seen that uh, there is a dose effect relationship between the amount of running that you do and the level of that biomarker. So in metabolic related, it's improving. In some other markers that more related to a um, let's say muscle damage, such as creatine kinase and the uh, AST, and uh, even some of the iron metabolism marker, you can see that actually running make your, those marker worse. So basically we can uh, show you the uh, anatomy of running and also showing to you in a way, maybe we can uh, give you some uh, um, hint of what is the amount of running that you need in order to improve it. because. I cannot be a ultra marathoner. Maybe you can, but most of the people cannot. It's very hard. So the question is, what is the little, the, the uh, smallest amount of running that I can do in order to get the highest amount of uh, uh, benefit from running? So that's something that hopefully in the future we can do uh, based on this paper. Basically to come say, hey, uh, Richard, for you, uh, you need to run uh, 5K twice a week. Gil need to run 10K because... Uh, uh, X, Y, and Z. So I think that that's something very interesting uh, to do in the future and basically develop science, as I said before. That is really interesting. And I must admit, I am looking forward to your next paper coming out uh, because you probably have one of the biggest databases, if not the biggest database, yeah. of all this kind of health and nutrition data together for healthy people. Which is 